Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today on Comics from the Future. This is our weekly show where we're going to go over the latest new series that you're going to want to sign up for. Some cool variant covers, all sorts of good stuff. This is a place where you find out what you need, put in your order with your shop so you can guarantee and get it in your pull box. In case you don't know, my name's Megan. I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're with Infinity Flux Comics out of the lovely Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's right. And if you could please take a second to subscribe to our channel, that would mean the world to us. We really appreciate it. We put a lot of time, effort, love, energy into everything we do. So, you know, give it back is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> give it to us. <laughs> or else. <laughs> also, please take a second. If you have seen the Eternals movie, it's been a while since we've had a not really actually had a marvel movie but anyway it's brand new and different let us know what you thought about it in the comments but no spoilers no so spoilers. people will get angry i've heard <laughs> all right guys so very interesting foc this week i'm sure there will be some news articles on this but earlier today diamond sent out an email that essentially told all retailers their website is down for the day i uh, don't know why it said hardware issues so our show's going to look a little bit different today. We had to scour all sorts of resources from the internet to get together today's show. So we do it because we love you. Anything else you want to add to that before we begin? I think that's it. A few of our screens are just going to be a little smaller. It was hard to find uh, high resolution images. Um, Previews World, which is run by Diamond, is one of the better sites for that. And yeah, as Megan said, it's been down all day. But don't worry, it's like 1 in 20 of the images. So. Sometime when it, this happens again, we have to hand draw each of what we <laughs> think the cover's going to look like out of craft paper and put uh -huh. it up there. I think it'll be I'm fun. Down. All right, so let's start with our featured comics of the week. These are a lot of the number ones and comics that we think most people would like to know a little bit more about. Beginning with... So this isn't a number one, or is it? This is Batman 118. Now, what makes this hugely significant? New creative team. I mean, you've got anyone who's ever worked on Batman has to be proud to be able to just mm -hmm. say, I worked on Batman. So this is the first issue after Fear State. James Tynion is ending his uh, just very impressive run. And so we've got a whole new team of Joshua Williamson and Jorge Molina doing the art. So what direction will they take Batman? I, I really hope they do something like from left field that's really memorable because I have to say, unlike any other Batman team, they're really set up in a way because of future mm -hmm. state. Um, because when you read the solicitation, so Batman, he learns that there is some sort of new mystery involving Batman Inc. And Batman Inc., of course, is his sort of international branch mm -hmm. of all the Batman. So he leaves Gotham. We knew because of Future State he was going to leave Gotham. We just didn't know why. And I feel like, you know, Joshua Williamson's like, oh, crap, I, <laughs> I got to figure this out. But I think a lot of times when you take a good writer and you force them to go a way they weren't originally thinking, you give them some confinement, sometimes they end up with something even better mm -hmm. than you expect. So I'm really, really interested to read this first issue, see what uh, his take on Batman is. I mean, if you look at Batman Rebirth from Tom King to James Tynion, completely different. Yeah. So it would be fine if he did something different as well. So we just want everybody to know uh, if uh, you're signed up for Batman, expect some changes. If you fell off for some reason, might be time to come back on. I know... Um, I thought Batman's art's always been good. It's been very different, but I think Molina's art is going to... Have you seen to, the preview pages? There's I, a few preview pages today. up, and it looks really, really nice. It's funny when you see some artists, and it just looks like, oh man, they're working at the top of their game. This looks like a, you know, a tier book. That's what this looks like. Yeah, so here is the Matina variant. So, so dark. <laughs> That it, you know, begs you to have to get near the screen so it can grab you. <laughs> uh, a lot of those really dark Matinas end up looking great, though, mm -hmm. because it's on the card stock, so it has that sort of glossiness to it. And then I also want to talk about, well, first, here is, there's more variants because it's kind of a special yeah. issue. Here is the Bogdanovic variant. Mm -hmm. A lot of talk about this cover. I've seen this cover for probably a month or so now, and people are talking about this is one of the best covers in yeah. a long time because it's an homage to Spider-Man. That's what I was going to say. Surely you recognize mm -hmm. the homage there. 
just, uh, yeah, we haven't seen a Batman cover look like this in ages, and, and that's why. And there's a big thing about that, too. That was going to be a 1 in 25 yes. variant, and there was such a hype for it, they actually made it an open order variant. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be a version of this that is the 1 in 25, but they made this available for everybody. That's awesome. I'm really glad. It, it irks me when they do the 1 in 25, and it's this awesome mm -hmm. variant everyone wants and we can't deliver. So that's really cool that... You know, that's one good usage of the internet. People get to see these things early and <laughs> yep. you know, talk about it. So I also want to bring up, there's also Batman Fear State Omega. This is the last Batman book that Tynion's working on. This is the end of Fear State. He is the writer of this. So Fear State is ending. Batman has left. This is Gotham without Batman. But the, he's not the only hero. There's all the other heroes that are there. So I think this book is going to be about them, about... Mm -hmm. You know, who's going to try to fill in since it's not like he left Gotham and it's a peaceful place. Mm -hmm. It's worse than ever. Now you have the law that's just about as bad as the villains. So I uh, just want everyone to know that this one shot is also coming out. And it has this Bianchi variant. Batman might be gone, but he's not gone from the covers. <laughs> I don't want to make this show forever, but uh, with Batman, you know, I'll never forget in the first four or five issues of Tynion's run, there was like the slew of first appearances beginning with Punchline's first appearance. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think uh, that you should sleep on if you've not been getting Batman. You know, you may miss out on something like that. Not saying it's going to go in that direction, but... We do know we have the new villain, Abyss, that's going to be in this one, mm -hmm. too. So, so. You but. guys knew stuff I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is a brand new Avengers title. This one is ongoing. This is Avengers Forever. This is going to be by Jason Aaron and Aaron Cooter. And this is really cool because this is a multiverse team of Avengers. It's funny, we have Justice League Incarnate at DC that's a multiverse Justice League. This is the Avengers version. And this is spinning out of Avengers 750 um, that has yet to come out. We kind of know a little bit from the Free Comic Book Day what it's going to involve. But it looks like it's going to be ripping the multiverse open and we get these familiar faces, some not so familiar. So this is going to be a team made up of characters like Captain Carter. I was waiting for Marvel to bring Captain Carter yeah. back into the comics. So she's on there, America Chavez, Starhawk. But it also teases some new reimagined characters like the invincible Ant-Man, who is actually Tony Stark. But if he was Ant-Man... Maybe he, he came up with the Pym Particle or yeah. something. It's, it sounds really interesting. It sounds like the first, maybe the first issue is going to be about um, Robbie Reyes, the Ghost Rider you see in the front. Um, he gets maybe like trapped on an like, alternate world and he meets up with this new Tony Stark and it's going to set in motion, a, a, you know, there's going to be a threat that only the multiverse team of Avengers can do. This is a really cool cover to pick apart. There's some really interesting characters in there. Um, some really random ones, too, that you wouldn't expect, but uh, sounds really cool. This is an ongoing, and it says it's going to go not, like, tied in super heavy with the main Avengers title, but that they're going to kind of run concurrent and maybe share some elements here and there, characters and storylines that they're going to mention. So this is our A cover. Then, like we said, we've got a little smaller picture here, but... Um, because you couldn't handle the full size because it's this awesome uh, Dotterman Scarlet Witch cover. Just another one to add to the stack. I of wish awesome I'd been Dotterman saving covers. up the yeah. other ones, but yeah, I love these. He did. I think it was the Rogue one first, Rogue. but that was an incentive. Mm -hmm. And then Marvel was like, "Yeah, just go ahead and uh, keep doing it. Just those. draw all of them. That's yeah. fine. That's great." And then we have the uh, Matteo Scalera variant. All right, next up is King of Spies from Image. This is going to be a four-part miniseries written by Mark Miller, and he's doing this in conjunction with Netflix with his Miller World Enterprise. So this is already a Netflix show. <laughs> so, all right, they say it is James Bond meets John Wick. Two tough dudes, uh, <laughs> basically. So anyway, uh, it is about a spy who is just aged out of being a spy, um, he's sort of reminiscing back on his life and considering whether what he did was good for his country, whether it made any difference. He finds out he is dying from cancer, so he decides, I'm going to make things right with anyone who deserves 
deserves it. People who deserve to die, I'm gonna kill them. I only have so much longer to live, so I'm gonna set this world straight. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the premise, the uh, way the story is gonna go. Uh, I thought it was funny that Mark Miller said, <laughs> they, were, they did an interview together and he said that they're, even though it's called King of Spies, there's no connection to Kingsman and he didn't realize it that anybody <laughs> might have that thought <laughs> until the interviewer brought Don't it up. Don't underestimate comic book people looking for tie-ins in the weirdest places. Exactly. Use that word once, you cannot use it again. There's the British flag exactly. right there. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I didn't realize this. <laughs> but maybe he's tricking us all. So anyway, King of Spies, Mark Miller. Um, it sounds like a really great premise in just a four-part miniseries once again. So we got some other covers for this. We have the black and white version of Scolera's cover A. We also have the Chiarello variant. Pretty cool. And then the Yildirim cover. All right, from DC, here's a new six-issue miniseries called the One Star Squadron. I, it makes them sound very, like, sort of discount. Not yeah. all star. Not all star. Not Just all star, one. not four star, not five star, not ten star, one star. So uh, this is supposed to be where heroism meets capitalism. And, I mean, you can kind of see that on the cover. This is a new team red or led by Red Tornado. And they have it where uh, they have a little app service where you can contact them through their app. And for the right amount of money, they'll show up to anything. From uh, an alien invasion to it's your birthday party. <laughs> they will be there. They're a superhero team with all their powers. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. I, it sounds you know pretty hilarious, pretty, pretty funny. Uh, just a different sort of story. So that is the general premise to One Star Squadron. And then we have this variant. This is the Pew variant cardstock cover. It got real dark real fast. <laughs> it, it did, and I guess this is their like Ghostbusters storefront. It's not a <laughs> firehouse, but uh, you know, it, it really does look very, very brooding. Yeah, it kind of it, it kind of gives you the impression that maybe this book is not going to be all super funny. There might be a, another side to it. Yeah, quite possibly. Next up is the long-awaited return of Jason Aaron and Mahmoud Asrar to. Conan. This King Conan was promised way back when Jason Aaron was ending his main run on Conan, and finally this is coming out. So this is uh, just a six-issue miniseries, and it is kind of Jason Aaron's version of the King Conan story. So King Conan, if you didn't know, is basically the, not the end of Conan's story, but he's He's risen up the ranks from being just a barbarian to now sitting on the throne, and he's got a son now and everything, but he's lived such a life of adventure and piracy and being a thief that he grows very restless on his throne, and so he sets sail west for adventure, and it says that a um, an old danger appears, something from his past that uh, may in the king's reign early so i'm really excited about this i love their you know they kicked off the new marvel era of conan and i think king conan is a really cool concept because it's like the guy who never wanted to be in that position is now like had to uh, civilize himself to rule and how does he break out of that and how does he deal with it? His son was really set up as a character in the in the last story. So, yep, this is the A cover for King Conan. We have the Hans variant. We have the Garson variant. Got to get the Garson variant. Yep. Garson loves to do the Conans like this. I wonder if that goes like next to his other one that he did for the I was thinking it looked Johnson. kind of familiar. Yeah, I, I thought that was a big face. It might have been a face. Okay, all right. But he's done one Conan mm -hmm. before, and it's really nice. We have the Stan Sakai variant. And then we have the Savage variant. All right, here it is. 80-page giant Geiger special. This is going to be a $7.99 book in the style of those DC giants. You can even see... As Geiger has been doing the checkerboard mm -hmm. stuff up front, 
which backfired quite terribly for DC. But anyway, <laughs> um, this is going to be a giant full of short stories about the characters that were teased, I guess, at the end of the Geiger series. So the timeline that we got featuring just the names of several different characters, this is going to go into their actual stories, and you can see that on the cover here. So it's going to be very cool and more than likely full of first appearances. Mm -hmm. So definitely one to put on your list, especially if you've been reading and enjoying the Geiger series like so many people have. So this is the cover that we're featuring today. Yeah, and we know we're getting Junkyard Joe next year is the next installment in the Geiger universe, but I think this is going to have a story about him. But then some of the other interesting ones that it's cool in the end of Geiger, like she said, there was a timeline and it's just like this character was then, this character was then, and it goes all the way back I think to like World War II and all of that. I'm really excited about this, and I love Geiger. Yep, they're just, they, Geiger was really popular, time to expand the yeah. universe. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, gotta have the glow on the cover, too. Mm -hmm. Every cover, a little bit of glowing. Okay, so, this is interesting. This is the cover to World of Krypton, number one. So, this is gonna be a six-issue series by Robert Vendetti. Uh, Vendetti, of course, has written numerous comics. Lately, he was working for Bad Idea. He did mm -hmm. Tankers. So he's a pretty wild writer. This is a modern retelling of the last days on Krypton. I don't know where it's going to start. I don't I don't think it's like the last day. Mm -hmm. I think this is like maybe right around when they figure out that there's this extinction event mm -hmm. that is creeping up. So I think that's a, a prime period to have a great little mini series about. So of course this is going to star Jor-El, Superman's father, who is the head of the science council. It's going to have uh, General Zod in it, uh, back when he wasn't, hopefully, quite as much a villain. <laughs> and uh, even Kara Zor-El is going to be in it, mm -hmm. so Superman's cousin. So uh, she's going to be in it, and it's just going to retell sort of what went down. It's supposed to be a lot of political intrigue. I mean, you can imagine, as with, I'm a fan of apocalyptic mm -hmm. stories, from um, books to movies. And some of the best parts is just the way it makes people jump. Mm -hmm. And all the things that happen, even more than the actual event itself. And I think that's what Vendetti's going to be playing into here. So this is the regular cover. And then we have this D'Amico cardstock variant. But is that? I mean, you immediately go, oh, it's Superman. But why does he have blonde hair? It's, is there something? Is this a different baby? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't even consider that. So next up is a new book from Vault called Lunar Room. And you can get a little hint about what this is about from the title. There's not a whole lot of info out there about it. Um, it's kind of one of those that the solicitation is just buzzwords. So it says, uh, this is a sci-fi fantasy noir magic tech gangster and werewolf story. Uh, this follows Cynthia Sin Breaker. And she is a former werewolf, a mob enforcer, and mage. And she uh, is forcibly retired, but something happens that is going to bring her out of retirement and maybe unleash her former werewolf uh, part. So uh, I've seen a few preview pages from it, and yes, there is a lot of werewolf stuff in this. So pretty cool. And this is our A cover. And then our variant is the Howl variant. I think I see some howling right on it. Mm -hmm. All right, tis the season to be freezing. And yep, I'm one of those people who's constantly freezing during the winter months, so I relate to this. Anyway, uh, DC always does their holiday one-shots, and this is no different. This is going to be a $9.99, 10 page, or 10. <laughs> wow, wow. comics got expensive for very few pages. <laughs> I, was I was trying to build it up. It's a $10 issue. <laughs> Uh, 10 stories, so a dollar a story. Think of it that way. Oh, um, they are really nailing the theme home with this. It is going to feature characters that are cold themed characters. <laughs> Mr. Freeze, the Blue Snowman, Minister Blizzard, Captain Cold. I don't know the rest, but I'm sure they're <laughs> going to tell us in this <laughs> special. And it's hardly eating ice cream in the snow. Of course she would. But that's, anyway, that's what this is. It's the holiday uh, special from DC. So this is the David Nakayama A cover. And then we have the Pop Mon cover B. Yeah, that main one's funny. It's like, 
she's got little like marshmallows or something uh -huh. in there that's like Hawkman and yeah, Batwoman I was and stuff. What that was. Uh -huh. But it's in I a think bowl. That was faces, yeah. I think she's eating ice cream with their faces in it. I I think I don't know what confection that may be. But then on this one, it looks like they've wrapped a bunch of Christmas lights around Mister Freeze <laughs> to make him festive. He's because he's such a festive individual <laughs> in the face all the time, and in his he, he actually loves the cold. It doesn't remind him of his wife at all. <laughs> this and a bunch of ones we're going to show later with the annuals uh, that are coming out. Please let your store know if you want these because it's a ten dollar issue. It is. Speaking as a retailer, it's very difficult to know how many of these to order. Some years, it's really popular, like DC's Very Merry Multiverse, which mm -hmm. had the first appearance of Kid Quick, right? Uh, last year that came out. Everybody wanted that one, but, you know, anyway, let your store know. That's what the show's all about. Okay, on to our next section. Other number ones. <laughs> they aren't featured, but they still might matter. <laughs> <laughs> Beginning with Sir Edward Gray. Acheron? I guess that's how it's pronounced. Yeah. Yes, Sir Edward Gray Acheron. <laughs> so that was some more confidence. So this is the latest one shot by Mike Mignola set in the Hellboy universe. Now Hellboy is gone. He's not around. I don't think you're going to see him in this. Maybe flashbacks, maybe people talking about it. Mignola likes to draw photos of people. You mm -hmm. notice that a lot of pictures in his stuff. So maybe there's a photo of Hellboy. But uh, what this is about is that Sir Edward Gray has to return to hell to fight a familiar foe. I was trying to rack my brains, figure that out, but I'm, I'm, I'm not certain who the foe is going to be. But for all you Mignola fans out there, I know there are many of you, don't want to miss out on this one shot. Is this the one that's actually drawn and written by Mignola? Yes, it is. So this is a big deal. This is the first time that he's done the full art for a story since the end of Hellboy in Hell. Yep. And if you know how Hellboy and Hell ended and all of that, you know, Hellboy was still in Hell and uh, Sir Edward Grey was like his, his Virgil from Dante's Inferno, kind of his guide through Hell. So I think this is a pretty big deal that, you know, we could see some spinoff from this into what's the future of the Hellboy universe. That is true. So next up is The Return of Maniac of New York. This is Maniac of New York, The Bronx is Burning, number one. So this was a really big hit, the first volume of this. It was uh, kind of one of the ones that, like, it took a minute, but then suddenly we're selling out constantly and people are, are trying to get the back issues up and everything because it's a really fun concept of if one of these slasher movie serial killers you know, they can't die, you can't take them down. So you just start to live with it and you start living around it and you treat it as just kind of a nuisance in your city. Well, this picks up after the first volume, but we're following some new characters in this as they've lost sight of the uh, killer Maniac, is it Maniac Harry? Yeah, and uh, as you can imagine, he is, he is making his way to the Bronx but this also promises it's going to be exploring more of how the city has learned to cope with this. And it says uh, it's going to talk about how the schools have maniac drills and that uh, the Maniac Harry is incorporated into rap lyrics of some local songs. So mm -hmm. I think that's the most interesting part about this is just, you know, they talk about him like he's a, like a weather forecast. He's like, oh, he's over here today, so steer clear in this area. <laughs> but... Uh, so all the people who loved that first one but were kind of upset that it didn't ra really wrap anything up, it's because we have a volume two coming out. And then we have our mask variant cover. Speaking of freezing earlier, I did actually get cold. <laughs> so anyway, uh, costume change. This is the Firefly Holiday Special. Um, this is sort of told in the... Uh, Chris, uh, Way of a Christmas Carol, where um, the character Jane gets to go through his past, present, and future and see his misdeeds. So we just wanted to highlight this for any Firefly fans. If you can't tell, a lot of this stuff is starting to come out in December, so much of it will be Christmas-themed. So, Firefly Holiday Special. Alright, this is the number one for the second volume of Hotel. And this is, like the first volume, it's going to have more interconnected stories. This is going to have five interconnected stories between the five issues of different groups staying at the demon-haunted 
Hotel. So if you like the first volume, here's your chance to order the number one of the next volume. I will tell you, and I, I'm not doing a play on words on this cover, but horror comics are hotter than I've ever seen them. You know, it seems like one every four comics we, we bring on the show these yeah. days is a horror mm -hmm. comic, which, I mean, that's, that's fine by me. <laughs> that's fine by me. So next up, this is Last Avengers Story Marvel Tales number one. It's funny, I think. Notice it first because I saw it earlier in color. Um, so this is uh, like the regular Marvel tales that are reprintings, and they put together some classic stories. And this one's really cool because this contains uh, both issues of the two-part story uh, about the last Avengers from 1995, and it is where an elderly Hank Pym puts together a team consisting of She-Hulk's daughter, a blind Hawkeye. They always love making Hawkeye blind. That's like the old man Logan version of him. And an aged human torch and cannonball to uh, finally take down Ultron once and for all. So these are another one that we never quite know how many to order. They are reprints, but they're usually reprints of things that either aren't super easy to find or they connect them like, you know, you don't have to go hunt down the two issues. It puts them together. So let your store know if this is one you want to get because it's also you can't put Marvel Dales it down as like it doesn't pull it um, for you as a series because they're all one shots so note on that let your store know all right now we're getting to a bunch of annuals from DC and this is kind of cool I noticed several of the annuals are focusing on the backup stories that have been going on so with Batman 107 through 111 we got it featured uh, Ghostmaker as a lot of the backup stories. So we're going to see the conclusion of that saga, and he will have to face every single villain from his rogues gallery. <laughs> so definitely going to be an action-packed uh, annual. These are uh, five ninety nine for the regular covers and six ninety nine for the variants. So it's not going to be too oversized or anything, but definitely want to put on your radar. So this is the A cover by Ricardo Lopez. And then, really nice, obviously, featuring Ghostmaker in that signature blue cover. This is the B cover, the Shirahama cardstock cover for a dollar more. All right, so Detective Comics is doing its annual. And this is going to be the prelude to the big Arkham Tower event that's beginning in January. In this issue, the mayor has signed off for the order that they can go ahead and construct this new Arkham Tower. So, of course, regular Arkham got destroyed during A-Day, which has left their no place for them to send all the, all the crazies of Gotham. So now, they're instead of just rebuilding it, they're going to do a tower, because, you know, uh, towers work really well to keep people, like Tower of London, all the great things that <laughs> ever happened there, if you know anything about Tower of London. So they're going to erect Arkham Tower. Um, and... It's also about how the Bat family reacts to this. They don't, some of them think this is a good idea. I mean, what else do you do with crazy criminals? Others think that Arkham has always been a menace. So there's a lot of strife within the Bat family about what to do here. The next thing that's supposed to be in this is a first appearance of a new villain whose name we were trying to figure out how to pronounce. <laughs> I, I think it is the Mager Man. It is spelled M-A-E-G-E-R. That's right, M-A-E-G-E-R. So Could the, be a typo, but... The, I... <laughs> the Mager Man. And the Mager Man is supposed to be the embodiment of Gotham's broken system. And, I mean, you can definitely see that in Fear State. I mean, for one thing, and I'm not saying this is what he'll do, but you could have a villain where he just goes around shooting and killing masks now that they've made masks illegal. You know, it's not like everyone's allowed to do that, mm -hmm. but you'd be sort of doing what the law says in a way. I, I don't know if that's what he's going to do, but, I mean, there's definitely a lot of room for them to build a new villain with the way Fear State has gone. So Meager Man would fit that description a little bit better. So let's hope that they... Meager Man, Meager Man, <laughs> uh, you know, it was M-A-E right there, so... Uh, okay, so now we also have the Jason Fabok variant to that. Nice. Yeah, I think we're going to get a lot of orders on this one. An interesting thing I noticed, too, in the preview pages of Batman 118, Harley's back in her original 
hmm, suit. I see that. She's on this cover. She's in that suit and in 118 in the preview pages. I don't know if it's a flashback or maybe she's, I don't know. Or is this punchline? Who knows? I'm just making up things now. But You're spe right. speculate two, two responsibly. Different, two different covers. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So next up, maybe we'll find out in something like this. This is the Joker Annual. Um, this one I'm excited for because one of my favorite issues of the Joker so far was the uh, Frank Avia one that was really focused on the first kind of year or so of Gordon's time in Gotham. And it looks like we are going back to that this time with uh, the emergence of Batgirl. And what does that mean for Gordon? And this is, uh, it says, the moment that Joker decides to attack is when Batgirl shows up. So it'll be interesting to see, does Gordon, even at that point, does he have any suspicious feelings about maybe Batgirl is his daughter? Um, we kind of know that he knows now, but how long has he known? So I'm really excited about this one. So this is the 2021 annual. And then we have the Dan Hip variant, which is just so comfortable to look at. It's nice to know that Joker is also a collector, you know, just like us comic collectors. Does he collect pins? Is that what like that is? Uh -huh. Or mini heads. I never think to put <laughs> enamel pins on a turtleneck, but maybe it's a new fashion He's thing. All over crazy. his sweater. All right, this is the Justice League Dark Annual. Justice League Dark, they've had a backup story in the regular Justice League series, and this is written by Ram V. So in this, they will find themselves going off against Merlin. So this issue promises to affect the future of magic in the DC Universe for years to come. So magic face-off, we'll see what actually happens. This is the A cover. And then we have our Paul Renaud cover B. Continuing with the DC annuals <laughs> is Nightwing's annual. And right there on the cover, you can see that Dick Grayson is going to have a special guest, Jason Todd. That's right, Nightwing and Red Hood are teaming up. They're uniting, despite the fact that they handle things in very different <laughs> ways. Uh, you know, both ex-Robins, but... They have had such different roads since them that have led them to be such different people. This the issue didn't say why they're uniting for this issue, but they're coming together for for some reason. Mm -hmm. So that is what Nightwing's annual is about. And here is the variant cover, the Max Dunbard cardstock variant. I like those two together because they're. I feel like out of all of the Bat family, the closest to being like brothers because when. Jason Todd came along, Nightwing was doing his thing. Like he was, it wasn't like one of them died and it, he got replaced. It's like, no, they were there at the same time. So I'm always up for these stories with where the, the former Robins team up. Well, you're going to like that Robins book that's coming up. <laughs> uh, exactly. I'm stoked about that one. And also excited about this one. So this is Robin annual. And as you can see on the cover, the main highlighted on the on the left side, this is going to be the origin of Flatline and how did she become uh, the the protege of Lord Deathman and I feel like this is going to be a really good one because we know some about her but we don't know a whole lot. Um, it also says that Atlanteans are going to be joining the fight uh, on Lazarus Island, which Seems a little unfair. I don't know if you should be able to join the fight after it's already started. <laughs> but we'll see how and why in Robin Annual. And then we have the variant. This is by Crystal Kung. All right, then we have the Superman Son of Kal-El Annual. This is... This series has just been so popular, but John Kent finds himself, as you can see on the cover here, up against Lex Luthor. So... He's meeting him for the first time as Superman. We're sure they've met before, but now John Kent is Superman, so how will their conversations play out? How will their dynamics play out? Hopefully we'll see it here. This is the John Timms A cover and the Steve Pugh cover B. It's not a very flattering angle. <laughs> but I, I like the cover, but it's an interesting angle with an interesting lighting choice. His head looks so tiny. <laughs> 
Okay, so the last DC annual is Wonder Woman's 2021 annual. This is also going to lead into the big upcoming Wonder Women event mm -hmm. that's going to be happening pretty soon. And in this, Wonder Woman, she's just back from her Trial of the Gods stuff. Mm -hmm. She's been back for a very little time. She's tried to reunite with the Justice League a little bit. And um, in this one, she meets a mysterious man who claims to know the secret, dark history of the Amazons. Hmm. And I'm not surprised to hear that. It seems they're kind of rewriting a lot of yeah. that. If you read uh, the Nubia issue, I mean, they're sort of adding and changing. I mean, even once they put Nora Floor there to be like, oh, yeah, then there's these other people over here. Yeah. So I'm pretty interested to see where this goes. And here we have the... Carlos Danda variant. I love his art. It's a really strong cover. Mm. The colors. Next up is a one shot tying into the Star Trek Mirrorverse stuff they're doing right now. This is Star Trek Mirror War Data number one. So if you like the Mirror War stuff going on right now, you want to find out what that, that good boy Data is doing, you want to check this out. And then we have the variant by Abinabi. Nailed it. All right, you guys know what this is. This is TMNT Best of Shredder. They just came out with the April O'Neil. They did all the turtles. So this is a one shot featuring the Best of Shredder. And this goes across uh, publishers, not just IDW. So definitely check it out if you've had the rest. These always sell out for us. So here you have it. It's an awesome cover, too. Mm -hmm. That one really looks good. Here is the Casanova's connecting variant for Darkhold Spider-Man number one. And uh, as with all the other Darkhold issues, after reading the Darkhold book, Spider-Man has gone insane. <laughs> and you get to go into his mind, see what warped and tragic and messed up things are in the mind of an insane Peter Parker. In his nightmare is he can only swing upside down. <laughs> or where his webs shoot from. <laughs> It's more like a real spider. <laughs> Next up is a tie-in with De Death of Doctor Strange. This is Death of Doctor Strange X-Men slash Black Knight. So, uh, I'm not going to say anything about Black Knight, but uh, so this is really cool that uh, Marvel is bringing Black Knight a little bit further into the uh, Marvel Universe, but I've never really seen him cross paths with the X-Men before. But this one says that London is getting uh, attacked by these extra-dimensional beings since all the barriers Doctor Strange had around have fallen. And the something has happened with the X-Men, and they have been transformed, so it's up to Black Knight and someone else wielding Excalibur to defend London. So, very excited about this. Very excited for more Black Knight in the Marvel Universe and seeing how he ties in with all of this Death of Doctor Strange stuff. All right, next up, this is from Behemoth Comics, and it is No Holds Bard, B-A-R-D. And that's right, anytime you say the word bard, you know we're talking about William Shakespeare. So this was actually kickstarted um, a while back, and it got a lot of praise. It is written mostly in iambic pent pentameter, which is how Shakespeare wrote his plays. So a lot of thought and care goes into this. So it's basically about Shakespeare's alter superhero alter ego. Um, when he needs to become it, he becomes the Bard of Avon, which that is where he was born. Uh, so anyway, he's going to encounter contemporary writers, or of his time, not our time, but his contemporaries and his own creations in the series. So definitely a truly independent book about... Um, literary stuff. So if you have any literary friends, or if you fancy yourself that at all, uh, this might be pretty cool to you. I think it actually sounds pretty fun and interesting. So lots of covers for this. That was the A cover. This is the B cover by Carrie. Also C cover by Carrie. And cover D by Kionis. So pick your fave. And our last other number one to go over is The Last Session number one. This is about a group of D&D players who've been playing together since high school. They played together through college, 
and they're about to graduate college. They're trying to wrap up the campaign because all their lives are about to mm. diverge. Uh, I know exactly what this is like. I played D&D all those years, and uh, a comic about how it's hard to finish a campaign, every, anybody who's played D&D understands that. Um, so apparently there's a somebody brings like a new partner to the game. I don't know if this is romantic or not. Um, I, I doubt it's a business partner. And that throws everything off and makes it hard for them to finish their game, and that is what this comic is about. Then we have a variant cover for that. Got to do the character sheet mm, covers. Yes. I'm, it'll probably be one for all the other issues as well. All right, so now we are going to do cool covers and other comics. By other comics, we mean issues number twos and number threes that we think are noteworthy for series. We just want to remind people to sign up on these series now that the number one's over with. But we're also going to show you some cool variants. First up is... Dark Knights of Steel, number two. Number one just dropped this week. It was fantastic. Really excited to see where this goes. And after the uh, surprise event at the end of issue one, it's thrown the kingdom into turmoil. So you'll have to read it to find out. This is a 12-part series just getting started. And this is our A cover. And then we have the Middleton variant. That was one of our best sellers this week. Uh, next up is X-Men Trial of Magneto number five. Featuring this one because it is the last of the five part miniseries. Unfortunately the number four it has not come out yet so we're really waiting for some gravity to be pulled into the series. So the jury is still out on it. Ha ha ha. Moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Okay, so this is the just the A cover to Doctor Who Empire of the Wolf number two. This series is celebrating the 25th anniversary of the 8th Doctor's debut. So pretty monumental to the Doctor Who, Who franchise for sure. Next up is this really awesome cover for Batman Catwoman. This is the Clay Man cover. Only well, got a few more issues left in this uh, kind of maxi series. So, All right, Soul Plumber number three. Andy was right beside me this week as I made it my mission in life <laughs> to sign people up for this series. And I'm sure fans of Soul Plumber aren't listening to this right now. <laughs> um, they're listening to the podcast and they're doing a great job of telling people to come to comic shops and pick up this series but I had to make sure that everyone signed up for this this week because the series is going on. It is time to sign up if you like this because there probably won't be left any left on the shelves as the weeks go on. So anyway, crazy story. I'm not even going to go into the premise. If you like it, you like it. Last podcast on the left. This is the issue number three by John McRae cover. And then we have the Kyle Hotz cardstock variant. Okay, so this is also up for order this week. Batman the Imposter number three. This will be the final issue of this miniseries. And uh, the battle between Batman and the person who has been the imposter of him, who's been killing people, doing things Batman shouldn't do, uh, it, it really heats up between them. The question is, can Batman undo the damage that has been done to his reputation? So you'll just have to read to see. Next up is the final issue of Batman The Adventure Continues Season 2. This is issue number 7 of 7. So if you want to see how this uh, version of the Batman Animated Universe concludes, um, we don't know yet if there's going to be a Season 3 or not, but this has been really fun. So check it out, number 7 of 7. I like the covers that make you guess, you know, or make you like, okay, there's Riddler, yeah. there's Mr. Freeze. All right. I just thought this cover was cool, so we threw it in last minute. This is Nubia and the Amazons number three. This is just the A cover for it. Wow. So maybe you like it and you're not even reading the series, but I did want to show it off because it looks really cool. Okay, so this is a great example of why we do this show. This is number two of Robin and Batman, a three-issue miniseries. Number one's not even out yet, but we already have to put our orders in for number two. You know, we don't make the rules. We just, you know, we have to follow them. So this is why we do the show so that you guys can hear about this stuff, order in advance, because without knowing how many people are getting number, number one, retailers are going to order a lot less number two. In this issue, so um, Robin is struggling with his studies of, you know, trying to become Batman's 
uh, sidekick. And so Batman decides to do something nice for him, which, I mean, right away it's like, Batman being nice, I need to check that out. So he gives him a break, and he lets him meet the Justice League for the first time. And as inspiring as that is, Robin also gets to meet other Justice League sidekicks. And it sounds to me like they don't necessarily get along at first. Mm. So a pretty strong premise to Robin and Batman number two. So place your orders for that now to ensure that you will get your copy. Sounds and like a nice juxtaposition of Batman Reptilian. Where <laughs> Batman does not do nice things for yeah, people. Correct. No, no. And here is the Raphael Abakurki variant. Next up is another final issue. This is the final issue of Swamp Thing. This is our Albuquerque A cover, and they have announced that this is the end of Season 1 of Swamp Thing, but it will be coming back for a Season 2 with the same creative team. So this is the A cover, and then we have the awesome Brian Boland variant. He can spell his own name. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right, really love this cover for Wonder Girl number six. This is the Stanley Lau Art Germ variant cover. Once again for Wonder Girl number six. Here is the Eastman variant for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, two, three. Yes, it'll even teach you to count if you buy this <laughs> issue. Um, so yeah, Eastman variant. I mean, a Casey Jones cover. We got to show people this. Some people are going to want it just for that. Mm -hmm. So there we have it. Then we have Ant number two. Uh, it feels like a while since I talked about Ant number one, but Ant number two is coming out. And if you like number one, sign up to get number two. Also a note, issue number three cover features Spawn. So it looks like it's heading some pretty cool places. You don't want to miss out. Eric Larson's pulling those strings that he, <laughs> that he knows. Yeah. Tom, Tom McFarlane's in the office, like, right next door. He just knocks on the door. Can I put you an ant? Or can I put Spawn an ant? <laughs> All right, this is crossover number 10. So the solicitation the solicitation poked fun at itself because it didn't know what to say about this issue. But we know from previous issues we're sort of waiting to see what other creators get on the chopping block. We've already seen Zdarsky and Snyder go by the wayside, so we'll see what happens in this one. Crossover number 10, this is the cover A. And then the Burnett B cover. That A cover had uh, Valifax on it pretty mm -hmm. big, so hopefully more usage of Valifax. There's a lot going on in that B cover. Yeah, there really is. This might I, this better be the issue. They they sneak in Spawn once again. Uh, McFarlane on his office, like Donny Cates is banging on the door. <laughs> Eric Larson's like, banging on the door. I think this is an homage cover, and it reminds me of Ice Cream Man. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys tell me in the comments. This is familiar to me. And we cross over, you know, maybe it is doing something, so. I, There's a big red cape, too. Or maybe it's Ha Ha, the, anyway, maybe I'm just crazy. <laughs> oh, this was thrown in last minute. Yes, this is the variant cover to Hell Cop number two. So this, this variant just popped up right before we started the show, so we just stuck it in there. We didn't want people to miss out on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little bit, ooh, racy. <laughs> so maybe people will want it for that reason, or perhaps you just really enjoyed Hellcop. So Hellcop number two, variant cover. All right, so the Me You Love in the Dark, this is issue number five of five. This is the finale where Ro has realized how uh, extreme and intense and dangerous her ghostly relationship is. The series has gotten a lot of acclaim. I, I've seen a lot of people reading it who usually just stick with like hero stuff. Yeah, it's pulled a lot of people into just a whole different. It does. It doesn't. It's just so different. The, so. Yeah, the last issue was pretty messed up. When you learn more about this entity, I'm really excited to see how this all wraps up. It looks like the house maybe goes up in flames, as we see in the background. Oh, uh, yep, probably. Or yeah. maybe it's just a dream. Maybe it's a dream. Mm -hmm. yep. Who knows? Next up is Devil's Reign number two. This is another one we don't have number one of out yet, but I mean, this is one a lot of people have already signed up for. I just think the the look of it and the storyline had people signing up already. I'm really excited about it. Uh, so, of course, this is the big event where Kingpin 
uh, finally decides it's time to uh, reveal all the secrets he has about some very key Marvel characters, including Spider-Man, of course, Daredevil, Elektra, and it says in this one that he is now going to enlist the help of the Thunderbolts, so probably where uh, Taskmaster comes into play. That makes sense. And then we have this really nice uh, Inyuk Lee variant. All right, is it me? This just so does not look like an Amazing Spider-Man cover yeah. from afar. Okay, this is Amazing Spider-Man 82. This is the Swabby, a.k.a. Sway, Devil's Reign villain variant for Amazing Spider-Man 82. So this is still following the Beyond storyline with Amazing Spider-Man coming out three times a month. So once again, the Swabby Sway variant. And then we have the Fornes variant. Boop, little... A little, uh, yeah. he's, he's creeping. Calm. There's something really humorous about that. <laughs> creeping Spidey. And then next up, we have Amazing Spider Man 83, another Devil's Reign villain variant. So, oh. so, notice they're making us have to do our orders for 82 and 83 yes. in the same week. So, just wanted to point that out. What villain is that supposed to be? He looks like Moon Knight, but yeah, it's not it, it's, it's interesting to try to figure out who they're homaging with these. Yeah, let us know if you can figure it out in the comments. And then next up we have Avengers 51, another Devil's Reign villain variant. I think this is what Mary Jane is craving. Craven, yeah. So. Okay, so this is the Momoko variant for Black Widow number 13. This is funny because it had one of those solicitations where it's like, you think you know Natasha Romanoff and her time in Madripoor? Well, you don't. <laughs> so this goes back into her past. They're going to add some stuff in that happened to her in Madripoor. And uh, there's supposed to be some, some major threat that maybe we've never seen before. Mm. But yeah, anytime solicitation, you think you know. <laughs> I, I, it's always just makes me, makes me giggle a little but. Very cool Momoko variant for Black Widow number 13. They never end it with, you think you know? Good job, I guess you do. <laughs> it's always you don't know. Yep. Next up is Captain America Iron Man number 2. So this is the uh, the little mini-series about the team up with Captain America and Iron Man hunting an escaped Hydra agent. Uh, this one's interesting, though, because sounds like we're going to get some new characters. There's a new team called the Paladins that are going to be showing up made of, uh, it says new superheroes. Sounds like kind of young new superheroes. And are they uh, are they actually helping or are they just getting in the way? I think it's funny because you have these two characters who are so seasoned now. Captain America and Iron Man, it's like, oh, there's some new people. Oh, we've already got our thing down. They're coming in here. So could be some new first appearances of characters. At least it's a new team of them. So, yep, yeah, this is the Alex Ross cover for that. And then we also are going to have a Devil's Reign variant, uh, but we do not know what it is yet. But if you're going to try to get all the Devil's Reign, this is one you don't want to miss. All right, this one is really cool. This is Death of Doctor Strange <clears throat> number four, and this is another Devil's Reign villain variant. This is really eye grabbing and super cool. So, I think a lot of people are going to be picking this one up. All right, so this is Hawkeye, Kate Bishop, number two. Now, number one is not out for two more weeks yet. We must order the number two just on the fact that we are looking forward to this series. And, I mean, it's it's particularly a shame because, you know, her Disney show is going to drop. Stores won't have ordered enough. Yep. And then the masses will come trucking in wanting more Kate Bishop. Uh, also sad, in this number two, I'll just warn you, if you don't like spoilers, don't read the solicitation. It, like, spoils something from issue number one. Mm -hmm. So what I'll tell you is the non-spoiler, which is, you know, in issue one, because I haven't got to read it yet, um, she's on a job in this swank hotel, and uh, apparently this little girl goes missing, and the hotel people, they're not so keen on helping her investigate, which clearly shows that there is more going mm -hmm. on there. But past that, there's another sort of major character that has, from her past who has reappeared. Uh, if you want to know, just read the regular solicitation, and it'll probably ruin a, a surprise for mission number one. So this is Hawkeye Kate Bishop number one or number two, and then here is the Hans variant. 
Again, we couldn't get that in as high resolution, so it's a little smaller, but there it is. Oh, next up is Iron Man number 15. Uh, so this one sounds really cool because in this, uh, Tony has become basically celestial size and is going to have a big throwdown with Korvac, but uh, we've had this really nice cover too where it looks like he's got Doc Ock arms. So, I see really that. interesting. A celestial with Doc Ock, Ock arms maybe. <laughs> Or I guess just this is just for the Devil's Reign thing. Could be. All right, I feel like I've seen this cover a lot lately, but I thought this was a really cool one, so we just want to quickly show it off. This is the Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 19, just the cover A. So looking really cool. This will certainly sell out. Yeah, and interesting about this, I haven't read the solicitations for it yet, but we do know that in the upcoming series, the uh, Crimson Reign, right. the, the center of the... The, the connecting, uh, the covers. connecting covers is a TIE fighter pilot that seems to maybe have force abilities. Yep. And this is the first time we've seen a TIE pilot like so front and center. So this could this could be first appearance maybe of that character. I think you might be onto something there. So Okay, so uh, this is the Rush number two, number one released last week. I did a review on a our Tuesday video about it. Issue number two, our main character, Nettie, she is looking for her lost son. She does not believe that he is lost forever or dead. It's led her to the Yukon, to the town of Brokefoot, and that's where this issue picks up. Also, there are scary huge spiders around for some reason that has yet to be disclosed. Mm -hmm. So this issue, or this series also has some horror to it. And then we have the B cover by Simmons. Simmons getting a lot of work now. Yes. Okay, so now we're on to our graphic novel section. Just a few this week. So first off, we have this. I'm so glad they're putting this together. This is the Flintstones hardcover deluxe edition. Uh, this, was, of course, was by Mark Russell. And if y'all haven't read this, this is a really good series. This was uh, from a few years ago when DC did all these Hanna-Barbera ones, and this one was, I believe, award-winning. It's just basically take the Flintstones and add some more complex stories to them and everything, but still keep a lot of the fun, a lot of the goofy elements. And this is going to collect, I believe it was two or three volumes. Um, it's 368 pages for uh, $49.99. I can't highly recommend this enough. Uh, it seems weird, and it is, but it's really fun. Yeah, I was surprised how good the Flint, like how much better than you expected. And I believe the writer, Mark Russell, I think he's the one writing One Star Squad, yep. which we went over at the beginning of the show. Yeah. So he, he likes to do the, you know, yeah, he, offbeat. He tends to take, because he also did that Snagglepuss right. story. Mm -hmm. He'll take a, a, like a, a weird story and then like really add a lot of elements to it. All right, there's less than a few uh, graphic novels this week because a few is technically three or more, and we only have two, so this is the last one. Batman vs. Ra's al Ghul hardcover. This is um, featuring the 1 through 6 miniseries that came out, I mean, a while ago. This series had a lot of problems with mm -hmm. getting, with delays and stuff. So, anyway, this is Neil Adams returning to do those classic Ra's al Ghul vs. Batman stories. Of course, Neil Adams did the cover and I believe the interior art for Batman 232 which was the first appearance of Ra's al Ghul so he just has a ton of history with it but this is all original stuff so it is a hardcover of Batman Ra's al Ghul. All right and that is our show so once again Previews World is down today. Um, hopefully they'll have it back up tomorrow so for those of you who like to watch our show and you know look at all the other ones that we don't go over which isn't a ton but you know we don't have time to do every single one I would check out Previews World tomorrow. That's a lot of why we didn't have a lot of the graphic novel and trades up as well. So if you're somebody who orders those, and you know, we definitely have people who do that, I would definitely look into Previews World tomorrow to get your orders in because it's really hard to find a site that concisely has mm -hmm. all that information. So um, you know, we, we, we struggle a bit this week, but we pulled it together. <laughs> so. 
All right, well, let us know in the comments what you're most excited about, and please take a second to subscribe to our channel. Until then, we will see you next week.